Good morning, folks. I'm sorry for the light this morning. Welcome as we join together to worship here in Strain. Um, we were just trying to get the technology to work there, but unfortunately, Facebook doesn't want to play ball at the minute, so we'll set up a recording device instead so we can post the service later on. Uh, but welcome as we join together this morning to worship God. We're a bit lower in number this morning. Uh, it's, it's easier to look around and see everyone this morning. But it's holiday time after all. But please remember that even during the holidays, we are still here in person as well as online. Please, if you can, come down and join us for the service. It's great to, to see everybody here this morning. Um, no real announcements for this incoming week, but because of the fact that we um, are now on to our um, summer activities as such, just to remind the elders that there's going to be a prayer time tonight by Zoom at 7 o'clock. I'll send out that link later on. Um, the one thing that I was going to say was um, our youth leaders, our, our BD, our, our DB, Stephen, has been working very hard with the Summer Blitz program, which is a three day activity program. So, all being well, everybody from BD and GB has been contacted about that. Um, if for any reason you, you haven't responded to that yet, please, today is your last opportunity, really. I've been nearly at the point of numbers. Please give Stephen a shout um, in relation to that. But thank you to everybody who's been helping out to get that organised. It's going to be an event from 21st to 23rd of July. It's open for 40 of our young people. Um, and I've seen the programme and it looks really exciting, so I know that the young folks are going to have a great time with that. One other announcement to be made this morning, and Brian's going to come forward and make that for us right now. So I've got a list of names here of people who have been elected onto the committee who will serve on the committee with uh, Sammy Gwynn as treasurer and me as secretary. And the names are in no particular order, to use a well-known phrase. Uh, Stephen Wilson of Falcon, Stephen Wilson of Old Belfast Road, Rosemary Black, Kirsty Patton, Drew Hiles, Phil Barron, Gary Long, Lynn Cairns, Nolan McLuggage, Morris McAllister, Desi Cunningham, and Chris Irvine. That's a great uh, team of people, and uh, I look forward to serving with them on the committee. And we'll, at some point over the summer, have a meeting uh, to get ourselves started and, I guess, dole out some duties. But uh, it's a great group of people, and uh, we are delighted that we've had such a great response of acceptances from those people and indeed from yourselves for all of the votes that you sent in. So thank you very, very much. Thank you. Let's pause right now and pray for our new commitment. Father, as a church, we really do want to serve you. We want to be active in our community. We want to be a place where the light of your love shines out. And Lord, that takes organisation, it takes structure, it takes volunteers. So, Father, we thank you for those who have agreed to let their names go on to the church committee, who have agreed to serve you. Lord, I ask that you would bless each and every one of them, that you would equip each and every one of them. And whenever they don't feel that they have the strength or the, the wisdom or the skill sets, that you would show them exactly how you want to use them, that you would use them to your glory and to your honour. So, Lord, Father, we thank you. For it's in Christ's name we pray. Thank you, Brian, for doing that. Thank you for everyone for voting and for those who have agreed to go on. And it's great to see uh, the next step along the way. A couple of birthdays just to announce um, now. Uh, one which missed for last week, who is Hannah Crossman. So happy birthday to Hannah. And then for this upcoming week, I am just looking around to see where some of our folks are. I do have a note that um, Eileen, it's your birthday coming up. So happy birthday. John Scott. It's your birthday as well coming up, so happy birthday. Um, Bella Rose is going to have a birthday, and Betty Dempster, and Lucy Burgess as well. So congratulations to all those folks. Let us pray for them. Lord,
Lord, as a church family again, we give thanks for Bernice. We give thanks for Hannah, for Eileen and John, for Bella Rose and Betty, and for Lucy as well. Lord, thank you for your blessing upon them, and please continue to bless them this year, we pray, in Christ's name. Amen. Let me read to you some verses taken from Psalm 18. I love you, Lord. You are my strength. The Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my saviour. My God is my rock, in whom I find protection. He is my shield, the power that saves me, and my place of safety. I call on the Lord, who is worthy of praise. We gather this morning to praise and to worship God, to look at his word, to realise what he has done for us. Can I can put the word to the opening verse up on the screen? God of grace, amazing wonder, irresistible and free, oh the miracle of mercy, Jesus reaches down to me. The psalmist said that the Lord was his strength, his rock, his saviour. Let us praise that saviour now as we stand and sing together the words of God of grace, amazing wonder. Join together as your family. 
May your blessing and peace be with us. So Lord, continue with us now, we pray, in Christ's name. Amen. This is one of those Sundays when you find yourself in a really unusual position. And as Sunday is the front of speaking, sometimes you'd be very tempted to drop the next part of the service. But let's be honest, how many of us enjoy the kids' address just as much, or maybe sometimes even more than the sermon? Don't we? Yeah, exactly. And anyway, it's being recorded, so hopefully the children will get to see it later on. This is the point where I was going to ask the boys and girls about something which is very difficult from the news, but I'm going to challenge us all for this morning. It's really difficult when, on the news, we might see what is the first slide. It's not responsible, let's do it. I'll see that one. Flick up for you. Blank. Don't worry. It's going to be one of those morning technology, isn't it? The slide is of a boatload of immigrants trying to escape across a bit of water um, to get to a better land. I wonder how many of us have seen those sorts of pictures? How many of us can sort of identify with watching that on the news? You know, that sort of thing is nothing new. And maybe for boys and girls, they didn't realize that this is something that has gone on for so many years. People either trying to escape from hardship or people being stolen or enslaved. You know, the Bible is full of it when you think of God's people, the Jews or the children of Israel. Many, many times they were captured, they were taken to foreign lands, they were enslaved, and it was very difficult for them. But in those difficult times, we have wonderful stories. One of them is about a young girl by the name of Esther. Now, Esther starts off as somebody who is taken from her own land into a foreign place, who is accepted as such, but who actually becomes a queen. Imagine that. Imagine being an outsider who suddenly gets accepted by all the people and becomes a queen. Now, queen in those days was not like the queen now. Queen in those days didn't really have any authority at all, but I suppose that's not really much different from our queen in the middle, it's all our government. But she was ruled over by her husband, by the king. And it was so powerful in fact that if the queen were to approach the king without being invited, well, that could be the end of her. And that was not good. And yet, in the book of Esther, we're told about an incredible story where Esther, even though she's scared, has to approach the king. The way to put the Esther is, relief and the deliverance from the Jews will arise from another place if you don't go. In other words, Esther's uncle, who was the one who wanted her to talk to the king, knew that even if Esther couldn't be brave enough that God would still save his people. But Esther was brave. Esther did stand in front of the king, and the king held out his scepter. She was able to go in and talk to him because she trusted God and she was brave. God wants all of us to be brave. He wants us to be bold, to stand up for him, and to talk about what it means to have God as our saviour. I wonder if we feel brave. Or do we feel afraid? It's easy to feel afraid, isn't it? It's easy to shy away. But God wants us to be brave. Let's pause and let's ask God to help us to be brave. Dear God, no matter what age we are, we get frightened, we get scared, and the last thing we want to do sometimes is stand up for you, to say that we love you and that you're our God. Father, help us to do that. Help us to be brave. Help us to be bold for you, so that others will know just how much you love them and care for them. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Gary, take it as Mr. Gabriel this morning. That's okay. We'll go to the Bible reading, sure. Don't worry about the, the, that next phrase, because that will probably go up as well. So we'll just go to the Bible reading, and we'll see if that works. Maybe it'll work on the screen, maybe it won't. If you happen to have a Bible with you, 
and you want to turn to it in the passage, it, we're going to read from 1 Samuel chapter 5, verses 1 to 7, and then chapter 6, verses 10 to 14. Maybe you've got a phone on you, you want to look it up that way. Um, oh, there we go, it's on the screen, happy days. Okay, let's hear God's word, let's read it together. After the Philistines had captured the Ark of God, they took it up from Ebenezer to Ashdod. Then they carried the ark into Dagon's temple and sat up beside Dagon. When the people of Ashdod rose early the next day, there was Dagon, fallen on his face on the ground before the ark of the Lord. They took Dagon and put it back in his place. But the following morning when they rose, there was Dagon, fallen on his face on the ground before the ark of the Lord. His head and hands had been broken off and were lying on the threshold. Only his body remained. That is why to this day neither the priests of Dagon nor any others who entered Dagon's temple at Ashdod stepped on the threshold. The Lord's hand was heavy on the people of Ashdod and its vicinity. He brought devastation on them and afflicted them with tumours. When the people of Ashdod saw what was happening, they said, The ark of the God of Israel must not stay here with us, because his hand is heavy on us, and on Dagon our God. And then skipping on to 1 Samuel 6, verses 10 to 14. So they did this. They took two such cows and hitched them to a park and penned up their calves. They placed the ark of the Lord on the cart, and along with the chest containing the gold rats and the models of the tumors. Then the cows went straight up from Beth Shemesh, keeping on the road and lowing all the way. They did not turn to the right or to the left. The rulers of the Philistines followed them as far as the border of Beth Shemesh. Now the people of Beth Shemesh were harvesting their wheat in the valley. And when they looked up and saw the ark, they rejoiced at the sight. The cart came to the feet of Joshua of Beth Shemesh, and there it stopped beside a large rock. The people chopped up the wood of the cart and sacrificed the cows as a burnt offering to the Lord. Amen. May I ask that God will bless this reading of his word. Let's pause and let's pray. Let's give thanks to God for this morning, give thanks to the offering which has been collected either physically or through all my giving, and ask that God would bless us and use us for his glory and honour. Let's remember as well that as we come into the summer season, and as maybe it's easy to get disconnected from church, let's remember our folks at church, remember how we can stay connected with them, and give thanks for the, the, the summer programme with the children and the young people, for the summer blitz, that God would really use us, and that um, it would be a blessing to all who take part. So let's pause. Let us pray. Father, thank you once again that we are here this morning. That we can gather to worship you. To just to stop from the business of life. And to sit in your presence. To know that you are with us. To be able to, to read your word together. And to look at what it's saying to us. Lord, we are so fortunate that we can do this in such a public way that we can record it and actually publish it later, that we are not afraid, that in this way we can be bold for you. And Lord, we pray that as this recording will go out later on, that you would use it to your glory. So I thank you for your blessing upon us as the people here in the stream. Thank you for the offering that we've been able to bring to you either physically this morning or through online giving. And Lord, we ask that you to take this offering and use it to your glory and to your glory. Lord, we really do want to be a light shining for you. So for that, Father, we thank you for summer months. We thank you for this program with our young people and what it will mean. We thank you for those who have volunteered to help out, those who have volunteered to lead it and to organise it. Lord, just give them wisdom, give them strength and energy. And Lord, during this time, protect our young people. But help them to know as well just how much we care about them and how much you care about them. We pray that you would truly use this to keep them connected here. 
Lord, over the summer, it's easy for people to disconnect from church as different activities stop, as things quieten down as such in the summer. Help us here in Australia and right the way around the world as your global church. Help us to continue to look out for one another, to look out for those opportunities to build bridges, to um, grow relationships, to grow friendships between each other. So people's friendship and relationship with you would grow as a result. And that people wouldn't disconnect, but that they would stay very much connected to church family and through that draw closer to you. Lord, we just pray for safety for our land for these incoming weeks. We know we are now in what we call in this country marching season. And Lord, we know that tensions can start to run high at this time of the year. We pray, pray for peace, for calm. We pray for understanding of one another. We pray for your love, surely, surely, that we would have shown your love and not show hatred and opposition. Lord, if something which comes through in this country so often, may your love reign and say. So, Father, thank you that we are here this morning. And as we continue to think about you, to worship you, we pray that you would really draw near to us. That you would encourage us, but also challenge us. For it's in Christ's name that we pray. Amen. I'm going to play something for you now. I'm going to try and play something for you. And let's see if this works. Let's see if I can get this up loud enough. And let's hear if you can hear this and see if you can spot what this is happening. Recognize it as thunder and lightning? Yeah? The wonder does thunder put a, a fear down anyone's spine? Anyone here not like thunder and lightning? Yeah? Funny story. My grandmother for years, I mean, she lived through the Belfast Blitz, had never faced her. She never worried about it. She never went out to an airway shelter. She always stayed in her house. But see, whenever she heard thunder and lightning, uh, she either went out to what we call the scullery, where the stairs came down with a little tin bath, and she either carved herself up in the tin bath, or sometimes she used to actually go upstairs and get underneath the bed. And she hid away underneath the bed because she had fear. I wonder what you're afraid of. I wonder, are you afraid of something very small and tiny, like a spider? Are you afraid of something which you envisage being slimy like a snake when actually it's dry? Or is there something else that you are afraid of? What makes you get underneath the covers of the bed and try and hide away from it? Fear is a word which means an awful lot or challenges us in so many different ways. Fear is also a word that sometimes when it comes to the Bible that we can misunderstand. Or we get the wrong concepts, or it means something completely different to something living in the outside. They don't understand the word fear. The word fear comes up in the Bible time and time again. It comes up an awful lot in the Psalms. For example, Psalm 128, verse 1 starts off Blessed are all who fear the Lord. Now, when you think about that word fear, maybe because you're sitting here in church, you have a different understanding of that word fear. If you look at the Hebrew for it, it can mean fear, be afraid, or revere. I know from the point of view of us in church, we would think more of the word meaning revere, or hold in, hold in a way that we respect, in a way that we don't dishonor, or a way that we don't dismiss. But giving God the right place. That word fear can mean so many things. But that right fear, or reverent fear, is what is missing in the story in 1 Samuel. There's been a battle. The Israelites were um, 
Well, they didn't actually have the right fear of the Lord at that time either. They didn't hold God in the reverent place that he should have. And they misused his ark. They took it out of battle without even asking God what they should do. And lo and behold, they're defeated in battle and the Philistines take the ark. That's the story that we start to read at the start of 1 Samuel chapter 5. How the Philistines take it. But to them, it's just like an idol. To them, they don't really understand what this ark is. For them, there is no fear. Go again. That's it. Thanks, guy. They take it and they put that ark in the temple of their God, it is called Dagon. And it's really interesting. They place it there, and the next morning, first of all, Dagon is fallen over, as if he is worshipping the ark of the Lord. And the people are starting to scratch their heads, going, What's going on? Who's been playing around with us during the night? So they put Dagon back up on his place again, and the next morning, they make a point. God has broken off the head and the hands, and only the body of Dagon is left lying there, again, lying down, worshipping the ark of the Lord. You see, they don't understand what the ark is. They don't understand that the ark is part of God's room and represents the presence of God to his people. There's a verse in 1 Chronicles chapter 20 and verse 2, and it tells us that the ark is the footstool of the temple. Now, if you don't know what a footstool is, a footstool is, well, if you've got a footstool in your house and you do know what it is, in terms of the ark, the ark was seen as the footstool of the throne of God. And as God is sitting on his throne in the heavenly realms, his feet are resting on the ark. That's why whenever the ark was in the tabernacle and then in the temple, the, the, the smoke or the significance or what signified God's presence was there. And it was whenever that smoke lifted that the people during their journey to move to the tabernacle and then whenever it stopped again, they built the tabernacle and it came back down into the middle part where the ark was. So the ark really did represent God's presence with the people. It wasn't an idol. It wasn't um, something we worship in terms of the other idols that uh, the people of earth had that were meaningless, that were man-made. This represented the presence of the living God. Now, whenever you could see what God was capable of, then yes, there was fear. Because God judged the earth at different times. Look at Noah's time whenever he wiped out everyone except Noah and his family. Look at the different battles whenever God wiped out people who were disobedient to him. God was someone to be feared, but someone to be revered. Someone to realize this is the living God, the only God. The one who's made everything that you can see around you in terms of the earth and the heavens and the stars. He is God. Philistines didn't understand that. They thought he was just another object to be worshipped. That's why they put him in the Dagon. But very quickly they realised that that's not the case. They start to suffer with their health. The ark gets moved around from place to place. And then in 1 Samuel chapter 6 they decide to return to the ark. But even in returning it, there's no reverence. There's no respect. It says in verse 11 that they placed the ark of the Lord on a cart. God's ark wasn't meant to be placed on a cart. It was meant to be carried. It was meant to be, whenever it was transported, it was meant to be wrapped and shrouded. It was meant to be treated with the utmost of respect. Yet they stick it just in the cart behind two cows, give the cows a slap on the backside and send them on their way. And God takes those cows and guides them where they need to be. The people then worship as the ark gets returned. But again, the people have lost respect for God. They've lost the fear of God. It tells us that so many people died because they dared to look inside the ark. 
and God has struck them down. What comes through from that to me is, do we have respect for God? Yet fear definitely comes into it. When you think of what God can do, when you read Revelation and you see what God will do to this world, there should be fear. But we should have the right sort of fear. Because God should have the right and the correct place in our lives. You see, God should have the first place in our life. God shouldn't be down the list. Or God should be placed in a part of something else. Or something else. The Philistines placed God on a par with Dagon. God taught them the way that they would understand that that wasn't the case. But we tend to do the same, don't we? There are things which creep into our lives and we push out God. There are things that come in and we think, I'll do that later. I'll, 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 I'll go to church another Sunday. I'll go watch it later on. I'll do my quiet time later if I've got a bit more time. And later it comes later and later and later. And we don't do it. Or somebody asks a question and we know how we should answer it. By taking a stand for God, we don't. And we may answer that question the way that they wanted to hear it, rather than by telling them what God wants us to say. And we dilute where God is in our life. And at that point, we should have fear. Because we are not giving God the right place in our life. If you want to think about it in terms of the relationship that you have with God, then we need to keep on working on that relationship. So that we have that right relationship. I love this picture. Our relationship with God is as God, as our heavenly Father. So that picture of a child's hand inside a man's hand is the relationship that we have with God. God wants to lead each and every one of us. And he wants to lead us down the right path. But if we don't follow him, if we pull away from him, then our relationship goes. Think of a father who schools a child, tells them off because they have done the wrong thing. We send the child to the naughty step, or we take something off them to teach them the lesson that they haven't listened. Maybe God has done that with us. Maybe we have gone off on a path which is not the right path. And God has reminded us of that because we don't feel his blessing we don't feel his peace we don't feel his presence that doesn't mean that god has gone away he definitely hasn't it doesn't mean that god has let go of your hand he hasn't you see in that leaf there that child could let go of the father's hand but the father still goes on with the child how often do you actually see that do you see a child who wants to go off and go their own way and the parent is holding them firm so that they can't harm themselves? And even though they tug and they pull, the parent still has a hold. God still has a hold on us. But we need to keep working on having that right relationship. Of giving God the right place in our lives. Giving him first place. When we do, everything else falls into place. That's what God wanted to teach his children so many years ago. If you follow me, if you obey me, if you do what I want you to do, you will be blessed. When you don't, you'll not be blessed. And that's the story of the Old Testament. Time and time again. What place do you put God in your life? 
Yes, you're here worshipping together this morning and you're watching it later on. But do you truly give God first place all the time? We don't. But that's okay. Because we can come back and we can say sorry. And we can start to learn each day how to put God first in our lives. This life is a journey. We will not complete that journey until the day we stand in the presence of our Heavenly Father. Until the day that He is there and He welcomes us into heaven. Until then, as we journey, let's keep working on having that right relationship with God. Let's pray together. Father, help us, we pray, each and every day. To live our lives recognizing you as God, putting you in that place that you deserve in our lives, first place, having a reverent fear for you, a right understanding of who you are, so that we can worship you and follow you, so that we can know your blessing day in and day out. Lord, forgive us when we get it wrong. Help us to seek out the right path again so that we can follow you. For it's in Christ's name that we pray. Amen. Our closing hymn is one which we have sung before, but one which I know a lot of you may not know. The words of it are going to appear on the screen. And if you simply want to meditate in those words as we hear it sung, that's okay. But use those words as a prayer. If you want to sing along, then please sing along. Let's stand again for our closing piece entitled Only a Holy God. Father, we thank you that we worship you, the Holy God. That we can cry out that we are worthy because of your grace and your love. Father, help us each and every day to follow you. Lord, as we go from this place now, we ask for grace, love and peace from Father, Son and Holy Spirit to be with us and to stay with us now and forevermore we pray. Amen. Folks, thanks.